Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the new podcast that examines iconic looks in film, television, music, and fashion history. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday, or whatever day it is that you're choosing to listen or watch this. Um, Sunday is the Golden Globes, okay? And I am going to be really, really curious how that all plays out. I'll be sure to be watching the show, of course, in real time with all of you. I look forward to seeing if people go all out for their virtual red carpets or real red carpets or whatever that that is that's happening. I, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't know what the plan is, really. I just know that Tina Fey is an Amy Poehler of the hosts. <laughs> so let's just fasten our seatbelts and see what happens, okay? This week, I am talking to someone who definitely knows her way around award shows, and that's Patti Dubroff. She's an insanely accomplished makeup artist and a real true rock star in her own right. She's intense and strong and one of those artists that's got this special sense to assess any situation situation and solve any emergency. She is the person that you want in your corner and two centimeters from your face when you're walking zillions of red carpets on a press tour for your award-winning film. That is why Margot Robbie won't go anywhere without her. We are going to talk to her directly about exactly that right now. So listen while we take a deeper look into how Patty and Margot work together on the press tour of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, from Cannes to the Oscars. And don't forget to check out the YouTube channel so that you can see the looks that we talk about in this conversation. YouTube.com slash look behind the look is where you can get that. Enjoy. I really want to, at the top of this, recommend that everybody watches um, your Magic Hour interview because I thought it was beautiful. Hollywood Reporter put out this beautiful video um, that was just like, it, it was incredible. It was a concise little bite size uh, version of your entire amazing career. And um, we all know you as a rock star in the makeup artist industry, and you, you really are the coolest. And um, it was it was really um, an amazing look at all of the different things that you did to get here and how you are so down, and that all kept you down to earth. Would you agree with that about how you were a counter girl even and you assisted these amazing greats and you just kept going and you really remained unstoppable and I wanted to ask after watching that, how you maintained that stamina and how you just kept going from age 10 <laughs> to today. I was super honored to that Hollywood reporter asked me to do that, you know, in the company that I was in with great, you know, screenwriters and, and directors, and et cetera. Um, and then to your question about stamina, I don't know. I just don't know anything else. Right, right. But this is just it. Like, it's what I do, it's all I know. And, you know, it's just an evolution. I've, I've, as you mentioned, 10 years old is when I really kind of first remember being obsessed with makeup mm -hmm. and having that idea of like, I wanna be around this stuff when I grow up. But back then, um, we're talking about 40 years ago, um, it wasn't a known career. And right. I don't, I didn't know then that there was a job of a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. Like I just knew that I loved all these little things. And, um, and I would be the girl who would be, you know, doing all my friends and my mom and my mom's friends and school plays and dances and like, you know, anything where I could put makeup on anyone. Um, one but, of you, but, but you never wanted to be an actress? I did for us. You second. did. Okay. That's interesting. How'd you know that? Did I say I that? just, I, I totally guessed because I had the same, um, the same type of draw to makeup and the, and doing everybody like that. But it led me to acting, you know, because that was my favorite part of putting the costume on, you know what I mean? But that's so interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I always, it was very much makeup, makeup, makeup. And when I graduated high school, I went immediately to New York city. I lived in New Jersey immediately to New York City. And the first real paying job as a makeup artist, uh, you know, aside from all the school stuff and social stuff was working at a counter. And, um, and, and I would work at the counter by day. And then I would work at restaurants or 
dance at bars or do I just hustled, you yeah. know, like whatever by night to to you know make it in yeah. as a 18, 19 year old on my own, you know, and I, I didn't have family to support me. I was like, that was me. That was I'm on my own. Okay, I gotta hustle and figure this out. Um, and there was a little drop of a moment of acting. And um, I mean, that's kind of another side story. It's kind of a great story, um, but um, I don't know if I need to get into that, but I, I had a, moment, a little flirtation with it and very much realized uh, when I was on set, I worked on a movie as, as an actress. And um, I always wanted to be around the makeup artist and the hairdresser. Like I wanted to be in the hair and makeup trailer. Yeah. And I wanted to be around all of them. And I was like, you know, knew like, that's what, who I really was. And also realized that like acting, it wasn't really about, I didn't really, I don't, I didn't really appreciate acting for myself. I really appreciate watching others act. Right. And for myself, it wasn't something that like, there was no real passion there. Mm. It was more like, I just wanted to be like, <gasps> I'm here to talk. <laughs> right, right, right. But all of that acting, um, the acting lessons I took, I did, I did study and I really loved uh, studying acting. And I know that that has kind of instilled this foundation of confidence in me to be able mm. to be a confident public speaker. Mm. So I would suggest to anyone to look into like acting classes, even if you don't want to be an actor, because it helps you to like, break through a, a, you know, a potential fear barrier of projecting, speaking, you know, being. Right, 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 right. And so it also, not- I mean, I think you are um, sort of like your, your reputation is of being a real anchor for the actresses that you work with and like a real security. Um, you know, I, I know that you can sense everything that's going on. You have sort of a spidey sense about making um, each person feel confident and like ready for anything because the red carpet can be a very scary experience. You know, it's a lot of pressure and it's, it's really crazy. And so I feel like you must somewhere in there have like a, a layer of knowing exactly what they're feeling and you're able to anticipate it. I wouldn't say that that comes from acting. I think that that just is more Mm -hmm. like being sensitive to surroundings, you know, and like being kind of, you know, not, not needing to speak, being able to be in a place to listen Mm -hmm. and, and observe, you know, and, and really it's such an important job of a makeup artist. And I don't think, you know, young artists really realize that you are so much of why you're there is to be able to flow with what the energy needs are in the room whether you're to be like chatty and animated or if that person is not in the mood for that you can't give that like you're only there for that you can only do that if that's what they need so if they need quiet and calm you need to you know perceive that and offer that Right, right. The self-awareness is, is uh, key. And it's listening. It's really mm-hmm. listening and not mm-hmm. just speaking or doing, right. you know? Right. Yeah. So when you're in a situation where, where the press people want something from you and you're sensing that like an actor might be, um, okay, like a perfect example, you know, like let's have her now, we need her right now, you know, and like right now, right now, right now. And she needs like 10 minutes. Like how do you navigate that? that push and pull (laughs) (laughs) you are a makeup artist is also a diplomat and you know you just really have to know how to efficiently uh give them who is the client who is paying for or sponsoring whatever what's being done making sure you're helping them do their job but you also don't want her to feel stressed and rushed and you know like frenzied Mm -hmm. so it's um it's really it's about grounding and being calm and centered and focused and polite kind speaking kindly not snapping at people you know and uh and not coddling and not being and not disrespecting what all the needs are so it's really like wow seeing the bigger picture of what's happening and not just the focus of like 
I need to get this face on. It's not just that. It's there's so many other things that are kind of cycling around and, and, and can you, if the more, the longer you're around, you have a better understanding of how, you know, the game is played and what right. all, who all the players are. And, and it's, um, it's really experience, right. And being put in those situations and like, have you ever had an experience where you're like, Oh, I learned a lesson there. <laughs> so many, so many, <laughs> so many, I mean, and, you know, I think with experience comes the ability to um, move faster Ugh. and efficiently. You know, I, I know that for me, um, the, the training that I had by working on fashion shows really helped me now be able to, you know, do, do things quickly and extremely pre precisionly. That's not a word. Pre precisely right precisely yeah <laughs> I've made up words all day long I love to do it um and you know what that's a good one I think we should just keep precisionly yeah I like that um so so we're talking today about um doing like a whole press tour right and I'm dying to talk to you about this I I'm so excited because I've never really, I think while I'm watching one, you know, like I'm watching like a, an awards circuit, I always wonder about how it works and like how you, is this, a, uh, is this an experience that you have? You've done so many, you've, right? I mean. Yeah, I was trying to remember like my, what my first tour was and having a hard time remembering. I feel like maybe it was like Kate Bosworth for Superman. Do you remember there was a Superman movie? She was- Of course, like, Parker Posey. Uh, yeah, it was, oh, Parker was in that too. It was, that was a long time ago. That was probably like- uh, 2014 or something. No. No, her, more? Oh, 2000, 2000 and my daughter was young. My daughter was like three and she's almost 18. So like 15, 14, 15 years. Oh ago. my God, I feel so old. <laughs> yeah. So we traveled for that and that might've been my first tour. I, but there, you know, Spider-Man tour, I went on with Kirsten Dunst. Um, tours these days, well, obviously these specific days <laughs> are like virtual tours. But, um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to be around when tours were grand you know yeah. you know we would get to like let's say tokyo and have like a full down day and you know be be shown around and like have time to like be in the place you were at before right. getting to work and, and experience work. it and experience it and rest and get in there and be mm -hmm. there before working and then packing up and leaving again um more likely the the more you know the tours that happen now are more about like i mean sometimes you land in the morning and you leave by the evening that city onto the next to then sleep in the next city wake up do it again get on the the jet at the end of the day to wake up in the next city oh my god but you know it's it's always it's like you know everything is you know everything's a little bit different but that's more how it goes now it's like and how 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 long do you get to sit with the schedule? Not long at all, right? You're just, it's, are you flying by the seat of your pants? Do you know, are you able to plan a schedule like month to month or? In my, my work schedule month to month? Yeah, like, you know, traveling and, and going to different places. When there's a tour, it's usually blocked out ahead mm -hmm. of time, but it can also be kind of you know you could have have to have a little flexibility because it might like start a little later or, or end a little earlier or later you know like there's there's a little wiggle room on the sides but mm -hmm. you usually know you usually see it blocked out on your calendar ahead of time often what could happen is they'll block out a larger portion of time and then they'll shrink it down ah, it's like, okay. it's like, it looks like I'm going on a two-week press tour and then next thing you know it's like wait I'm only gone for six days <laughs> okay. all those cities okay <gasps> oh my god so you do you get to go and and experience the cities on like recently did you get to have any downtime i i am i'm a big believer is as soon as i drop my suitcases i will go out and oh you do 
Oh yeah, I I'm in, I want to be in the city I'm in. I'll Aww. go out for the walks. I'll go out for dinner outside the hotel. Like I want if I'm somewhere, I want to be that place, and I don't want to just be in the hotel, mm -hmm. if possible. I mean, there's been times where, I mean, these are crazy stories, but I remember like going to, um, you know, Sao Paulo and Rio, and we weren't allowed to leave the hotel, you know, because of safety issues. Uh huh. You know, there's those ca weird cases, but for the most part, I like I'm an adventurer, and I want to I want to be in the place that I'm in. So. Um, I can some see people, that some people don't some people are happy to just like be in the hotel and enjoy room service and a black bath you know mm -hmm. but I I like you know I like to like get online I'm always the one be like okay I found these restaurants like <laughs> I'm like the foodie of whatever group and um unless the client has things planned which can happen also but like we're in Mexico City we got to go to you know we have to go to Pujol <gasps> get a table like you know it's like that it's like <laughs> okay I definitely know who to call when I'm like traveling to these places now <laughs> you probably yeah, know the best of everything I'll remember I hope I've tried to keep notes but you know, yeah <laughs> yeah 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 of course especially now um so so when you let's we're talking today about um once upon a time in Hollywood okay. and um the press tour for that which kicked off in Cannes, right? Or Rome? Cannes. Uh, yeah. the, the very first time the film was shown was Cannes, May of, what year was that? Well, it was 2019. I did, May. Um, yeah. Seems like forever ago now, because this year was so long. Oh, right. And that was the last kind of in-person Cannes, that's right. So yeah, yeah, the film had its major world premiere at that festival. And then we, um, went back to New York and there was, you know, other things to do, photo shoots and whatever, and, you know, other work for everyone. And then we reconvened and then we set out on the um, international press tour. I see. Okay. Okay. So, so it, wasn't, it wasn't like one band of time. And, um, ah. and the, the press tour itself, it had, you know, like it had a European component and then we came back and we had an LA component. So, um, right, because it premiered at the Chinese theater that summer. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I think after we had been in Europe. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The timeline was this, this look overtook the yeah. world. Um, that oh, was the goodness. first image that I remember seeing, which was Margot. Well, so, so when you guys are planning can, what is that? like like is it it's just like is it like prom like we're going to prom like <laughs> what are we wearing what are you doing what is the theme because yeah. this this tour it's, seemed to have the same theme through the whole run of it well there was actually like kind of two sections ah so can we um at least for me for for beauty uh -huh. We leaned a little bit more into like the late 60s Sharon Tate mm -hmm. of it all. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, it was the first time it was being seen. It was an, it was very much an ode to Sharon, you know, the glam. Yes. Um, at least for that, especially for that premiere. So, um, I, I, but then, you know, and, and okay, so, oh, and what about Cannes itself? Cannes, it's like, it's like the Oscars, you know, it's the equivalent of, of a very high profile event, mm -hmm. but, you know, because it can has some weather elements, you know, hair has to think about things where we have to pay attention to things because it's very much outdoors. It's a very long grand carpet, um, et cetera, et cetera. That outfit was spectacular. It was vintage and it was so cool for her to wear those, you know, trousers, with that little baby doll, um, whatever bang top thing it was incredible so, so I leaned into the 60s because I really wanted to like it was like a it was like a thank you to Sharon Tate, yeah who, who Margo was playing in that film um and then we pulled back and came back here and then again you know did other press and and really at that point when we were moving into the other press it was like let's not keep going with the 60s let's not make this like cosplay you know we didn't uh -huh. want to you know, too, like, 
60 Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. So in my mind, I imagined, I kind of shifted a little bit to the 70s. So I imagined like if Sharon would have lived and it was 1972 or, you know, 75, whatever, what could she have worn? And that was just like, it was just like my mental, like, no, let's not go 60s, stay away from the 60s, let's evolve from the 60s. And it wasn't like, I didn't want the viewer, the, you know, people to know that or see that, but it was, it was very much for me. And like, um, the premiere in LA at the uh, 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 what? Chinese theater. Chinese theater, thank you. That was really like, that was the 70s. And that was an ode to like Lauren Bacall. Oh, no, sorry, not Lauren Bacall. Lauren Hutton, 70s. I had a specific image in, in mind of Lauren in the, in the 70s, late 70s, later 70s. Um, yes, I saw that Lauren Hutton was a huge influence for the whole team. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah so and and that one specific so then with the tour um you know because you're traveling clothes and the clothes need to be it needs to be right it needs to be packed up it needs to be planned out and um and the stylist the amazing stylist Kate Young she uh her color harmony had this reflection of the colors in the tones in the poster of you know and the feeling of the movie. So if you look at the movie poster, yes. it has these like, it's the Hollywood sign, mm -hmm. but there's like, you know, oranges and like that sunny California, but then there's that earthy, you know, we're in the desert here, right? So those were, that was the palette. It was like, it was oranges and soft peaches and sometimes a sagey green. Um, and the palette had had a flow. And again, it's not for the viewer to be like, oh, it's the orange show. It's like that there's a harmony, of course, like, you know, you're thinking about she's being photographed in front of these backdrops that, you know, say that it looked like this. What if, if that backdrop was red and she was wearing, you know, whatever that sage green, it might not look so great. But knowing that that backdrop looked like what it did, you want to make sure that there's harmony. That's a that's smart incredible, that's, incredible. That's, that's a season stylist to to think like that. To, mm. to also think about like who are they going to be standing beside, you know? So like if it's you know if she's the only female, you don't want her to look too sexy because that would feel weird. But you don't want her to be. You want her to feel feminine, but you don't want her to feel so soft that she doesn't match the strength of these powerful men that are beside wow. but then again like let's say you're working on a tour for a film like little women which i didn't do but i'm just i just thought of it um it's a bunch of women and so there there might be a different way of expressing you know femininity in in clothing or mm -hmm. they the stylist might and i don't know this for fact but i i mean i know sometimes they do it i don't know if that case but right, right. Stylist might have a conversation and be like, well, this is the vibe she's going to go for. And this is the vibe. So, you know, making sure that the vibe is similar. They may do that. They may not do that. You know, depends on relationships. But whatever. that's definitely what happened here. Uh, well, we weren't, we were, I don't think Kate, Kate wasn't necessarily like trying to, uh, uh, you know, match uh, what the, okay. the boys look like, but, but I'm just talking about, it's thinking about who you're beside and being photographed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And being photographed in front of so that is wardrobe and then for me um i i also when i'm traveling i want i don't want to take everything. i know i was gonna ask you about that <laughs> like i want to pack it as small as possible and i even um when i'm traveling i because i've learned the hard way i will i'll pack a kit and i'll check a kit right okay so always pack a carry-on uh -huh. Just in case. Uh, just in case. Oh my God. Like so I've got her foundation. Okay. Her, I've got I've got enough to do a few looks in a little bag, just in case that bag doesn't make it. Oh, has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Oh God. I mean, it's it's happened a couple times, and it's always made it in the nick of time. Okay. But um, 
because it's happened and there's been that stress, I don't ever want to be in that situation. Anymore. Exactly. So, and I want to pack like whatever I'm checking to be really small too and concise. I'm not bringing the whole kitchen sink. So at least I know who I'm working with. So I know their skin colors. That's important. You know, you can scale your foundations down. And then I also want to have harmony in my kit. And so I chose a color palette for that tour. Uh-huh. And, uh, and that's where that was leading to is that I chose a palette, a specific palette that I was always going to have something in the orange family represented. So you I, I pick- see that and it's, it's amazing. And then you added purple here. Yeah. So, and I didn't want it to be like predictably only orange, orange, orange. Uh-huh. And, you know, so like adding little elements that feel harmonious, but there's that, that little thread, like you see there's London that has the orange into the purple. Um, and then, well, that, yeah, yeah, you're kind of like, oh, sorry, I'm like telling you what to swipe, but that oh, was, no, no, no. that's LA. So that's a little bit later. And that went a little redder. It was again, an evolution thing. Yes. Um, and then there was, um, so there was London, the three main cities we did on that tour was London, Berlin, where she's wearing a uh, sage green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rome, where she's wearing like a, uh, kind of a slip yeah that's that's Berlin and um and then yeah and then that kind of like whatever color okra color what um, is the red way? carpet but then there's the day events that all also oh have- god yes of course I mean this you- is this is you- a press this this was a homage to Sharon yes with the braids yeah, that, mm-hmm. that was can and that was the photo calling can so that was still part of that can homage to Sharon. I can't remember how did how did that how did you handle that so delicately? I mean, it's such a, a you know uh, how did the press receive it? I loved it, um, but you know it, it must have been a challenge, or there must have been some discussion about we're going to pay homage to Sharon and in a respectful way like this. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't want the makeup to look like, you know, a costume drama. Right. So I I g- gave light touches. Of yeah. Makeup. It was a light. perfect balance. Yeah, I mean, I the makeup I do is pretty light, you know, on the lighter side, so I don't I don't go heavy. I think I think if it would have been heavier, more right. theatrical, it would have looked like a costume drama. Right. But, you know, it was like I feel like it was just you know, hints. I yeah. The nudge towards that kind of vibe. Yes. Yes. And, then, I, yeah, and I back love to it. the tour, like the, the Europe tour, there were always those like orange warm tones, but in different ways. Like, you know, the the Rome premiere was a pop of a poppy red orange lip, like a little burnt orange with a pop of bright in the middle. But um the lips are incredible. The colors are just like this one, it's 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 uh is it orange it it was like a brick it's actually like a brick i wish i could remember exactly what i wish <laughs> i mean you mix it up and all that uh, it was like a brick tone and it's beautiful um, and there were daytime events for all of those so the daytime events you know obviously there's like they're, they're daytime press events but but they were in the same spirit and tones you know. right Right. So then when, when you find out that the Oscars are happening, did, how far in advance do you know about the Oscars? Uh, well, it depends on if someone's presenting or yeah. if someone's presenting, it's when they're offered a presenting spot. Uh, if someone's possibly going to be nominated because their movie is getting buzz and attention and conversation, you might get put on hold, but you don't know, you're not officially, your hold isn't official or confirmed or whatever until the morning that the nominations are announced. So, so you might think you're going to be working with someone. If they don't get that nomination, you're not working with that person. Right. Oh, or, you know, maybe- and there's so many levels of emotion writing on that. Oh my God. Like, yeah other things like if someone's committed to presenting but then the project that they're working on needs them on set right they have to step away from that and do their their 
their real job or, you know, whatever. Yes. So I've had many, um, you know, I've had multiple Oscars where I've not worked and I've watched in my sweats on my couch. <laughs> You know, yeah. wishing a little bit like, oh, I wish I was doing someone this year, but y- you, you can't, like there's, you know, you can't always be doing something. Like, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I mean, I, I do want to ask you about that. Like you are, um, you have had, you had that, you had brain surgery. I don't know how else to... <laughs> <laughs> to say it. I mean, you have had a major, major, major life change and you just kept going. And this is before COVID. This is, you know, I mean, how do you stay so brave, Patty? And how do you just keep going like that? I know you don't, you say you don't know anything else and you know, you it's just in you. It's part of your DNA, but to go as hard as you still continue to go and take the risks that you still take and I mean how is that fire just still so alive in you after all that you've experienced I mean I've learned a lot in COVID about the the joy of slowing down and the Uh joy not being jet lag that's my god the travel difference must just be oh yeah to have like no jet lag and a solid night's sleep and you know, my body on the same time zone for a extended period of time, it's been amazing. But like with the surgery, I was super lucky that this aneurysm was detected before yeah. anything bad happened. So it was an elective, well, it was a necessarily elective surgery. Um, I don't know if elective is the right word, but but it wasn't an emergency surgery. So right. To, like, you know, spiritually prepare myself for mm. this thing that it was the first time I spent the night in a hospital when I really Mm -hmm. because I I gave birth at home and I like I'd never had anything happen before like I was always you know healthy and lucky and 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 you know would avoid medicalizing anything Mm -hmm. as much you know I really was able to slide like that so um you know, my family likes to joke that like, you know, when I, I, I go big or go home, like I first time in a hospital, let's go for brain surgery. You know? <laughs> um, and I had to, I remember I had to take 30 days, uh, a full month off after the surgery to rest. Oh, that must've been difficult. Oh, I was so freaked out by that <sighs> um, because I would never took a month off. I'm like, go, 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 go. Yeah. And And I was so antsy by like week three, like I'm like ready to go. And, and, um, literally one month after the surgery was the Emmys. And I, um, so I I was booked for Priyanka for the Emmys. It was my first job. I had an assistant because I wasn't allowed to lift anything. And, and, you know, she, because, you know, I only worked with people like I knew that I could kind of talk to on the side and let them know what was going on. Right. We had a relationship. She trusted me. So I did her for the Emmys. And then I literally got on a plane that night to get to fly to London to do press with uh, Margot. <gasps> and it was like, the doctor told me I had to take one month off. And literally at the one month point, I'm like, okay, I'm out. I'm going. Bye. I'm right, off. Right. Here I go. And I mean, my husband was, you know, he, he didn't appreciate that, but he, he's just like, all right, you got to do what you got to do. He knows who he married. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, and it did like kind of open up this like fearless door. Like, you know, I'm not, I don't need to take, I don't need to, to be shy to take risks. Let's do our yellow eyeshadow. Yes. What? Life's too short. <laughs> yes. 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 And that look for the Emmys was incredible as well. Yeah, it was very... Um, you came back with like, bam! Well, it's funny because Priyanka actually said like, oh, you should have had brain surgery a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it, I, I assume it awakened things in you, yeah? It, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm really woo-woo, but like... But it was funny that she could joke with me like that because I, I thought it too. I'm like, oh, wow, um, I can do and whoa whoa I was surprising myself but um yeah I mean life's too short to not you know kind of 
follow safe impulses, safe impulses, obviously. Yes. I know. I, my, I have to say my speaking of impulses, I was going to want, I was going to ask you if this was planned or an impulse and I forgot to, um, send the image, but the suicide squad image of, with the dark lipstick, um, of Margot is like my all time fave. And yeah, I think I, that that's my favorite red carpet ever. It's insane. And like what I feel like the 90s, that's how I feel like I was doing my makeup in the nineties. But it, when I see pictures, I'm like, no, <laughs> but like, it is, it's, I, Amazing. Was that an impulse thing when you found out you were getting the McQueen? It, she was um, going to wear McQueen. Well, there was that, like, when she tried on that dress, um, <laughs> like, oh my God, what do you do with a silver unicorn dress? Like, <laughs> and I, you know, the word impulse, I, um, when I see, when I see a fitting, an outfit, an image of the outfit, whatever that thing's going to be, I always get like a spark of like my first impulse is like, Oh, that needs to be a black lip. And then, ah. and then I I keep that and then I think like, okay, well, what else? What else? Ah. So I always want to come to the table with three ideas. And I very often like to make mood boards. Um, and so because you know, words don't necessarily convey this the right, the same imagery to the same person, right? Right. Um, on that mood board, you know, for that particular dress, I had like, you know, really some strong imagery and, you know, editorial imagery and 90s stuff, like, like you mentioned. And, and then I also had one that was like a little softer and maybe a little silver on the lid to, to harmonize with the silver of the thing. And I'm really lucky that the team, Margot and Kate Young, the stylist, were like, let's do it, let's go for it. Also, an important thing to say with that is what film, what film is being talked about or why are they there? What's the event? Because like the Met Gala, you know, that, that look would have looked great on a Met Gala red carpet as well. That look would not have looked appropriate um, on, you know, an Oscars carpet or, yeah. or on a, uh, you know, if it was, if she was promoting a film that had a more serious, you know, um, theme, plot, whatever. And what makes that, what makes you sort of know, is that instinct? Is that experience? What makes you know what's going to work? Experience and kind of like, you know, understanding the vibe, you know, like, because your looks, it's badass. So she could have a badass black lip. Yes. But again, if she was promoting something else, you know, Mary Queen of Scots. Right. Crazy. Oh my God. Oh my God. That movie, (laughs) poor Margot in that movie. I remember. Oh my goodness. Um, The, the, the looks that you do and present are always like, they always make everybody, everybody just like, I mean, they just get regrammed and regrammed. How do you feel when you see that unfolding? Is it, does it happen live? Do you like check your Instagram and everybody's devouring these images on the red carpet? I mean, that's how I see it from my perspective is yours are like some of the first to be like, this is the best look of the night. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about that. I feel like what gets, regrammed and repurposed is the the bts pictures we take oh sure yeah i'm sure that's that's what that's what the people really want you know (laughs) stuff where you see it get over and over the fan bases and and even you know publications online publications or you know will will uh, appropriate those images and um and i it's flattering when they credit you when they credit you, yes. Listen, listen. Um, I, I, I know. I think about that. Very guilty of that, and and uh, yeah, it doesn't feel good. Hmm. I know because that. I think they're getting better. I think that. I think that. You know. I think maybe they're realizing it's really important. For- sure. I mean people are learning manners as we go, right? Like it's, it's happening fast and, and it's, you have to learn those things just like etiquette with it anything else. Pause to like write a credit instead of just that, like, you know, <laughs> and or like, you know, pressing that button fast. So. Exactly. Exactly. What are, what are, if you can think of three pieces of advice, three, let's do three. 
what would your three pieces of advice be to someone who just got came here and is I'm good at makeup and can I assist you? Do they say, can I assist uh, all the time? Oh, I was going to say just general advice things that was coming to mind first. Um, it's really important to be a good listener. Mm -hmm. You know, I said that before, but I, it's super important. Um, it's also, it, it, as much as people want things to happen overnight, and I guess, you know, now with like the, the world of social media, it seems like careers can explode overnight and mm -hmm. some do. Um, I think that there's a lot of value in, in being ready for opportunities when they come your way and being patient, knowing that, you know, the more foundation you have helps you to be more confident when you have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important. Um, and I think that another big thing is, you know, being a makeup artist, like, or at least the version that, that like what I do and what I've done is you're there to, you're there to serve it. Like you're there to serve something. No, oh, that sounds so terrible. No, but this is so, what I want to talk to you about for sure. Because I talk about this all the time with like, Troy serve, and but you're, you are, um, you are there to, you're a support person. Yes. You know, and it's not all about you. Yeah. And I know that like now with lockdown, we're all making it all about us on the screen. Da, 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 da. Fine. That's, th there's a place for that. Yeah. But it is when you are there to be the artist, you are not the star. You, it, you are not the diva in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and some talent maybe like a little bit of a diva attitude, but I think that the majority don't. They want you, they want to know that, you know, you're there for them. You're not there for you. And another thing is, I mean, this may sound a little silly, but like when I work on clients, I don't wear makeup. Like I, I don't want it to be like, I've spent all this time on myself and now I'll give you a little time. It's like, right. I, I want to be clean and presentable, but I want you to know that I'm there for you. Yes. Um, that was more than, well, that was three maybe pieces, but like, I'm sure there's others. And um, no, but that's so yeah. valuable. Patience. I mean, I've been doing this for 40, well, I've been doing this for like 30 years, literally professionally, more than 30 now, 32 30 more, oh God, four years, you know, like, and I, I, if I would have had opportunity, like the opportunities that I've had in the past, you know, more recent history, if I would have been offered those when I was younger, I would have failed. Mm. You know? I wouldn't have had experience in how to be in those situations and how to be in those rooms and how to handle, you know, the personalities. And uh, do, How do you think you got the quickest route to that experience? Was it Francois or was it, was it backstage at the shows or was it the counter? I think it's all of it. All of the, it. Yeah. The counter is um, helping you to, be exposed to different skin tones and types and personalities and listen to like what mm -hmm. people are looking for, you know? And then being backstage at shows, it's about precision and, and uh, being quick and precise and, um, and you know, being able to, to, to act on your feet. Um, and, and then being, on, and being an assistant is like about the power of observation, you know, and, and understanding how when you know the photographer you know like maybe you're not there for those meetings but like trying to understand like what they're wanting to accomplish and and who's saying what and how you know all of those things are going to blend together right um, right important. you know you're really there to like you you have to like be almost the detective like you yeah know, like you know like the photographer wants to accomplish this but the magazine wants to accomplish this but this client, I know her comfort zone and her comfort zone is this. How do I help marry all those things to get the result that everybody wants? I mean, that is so underrated. What you're talking about right now is so rare. And that's what a big, that's what you're paying for. It's experience. Yeah. 
that helps you get there. I mean, you need to understand like when one person says natural <laughs> and when someone else says natural, there is such a wide sure. range of what those outcomes are expected. So, it's like it's like smoky eye, like oh god. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh, Patty, this was such an amazing conversation. And how do you find, how do you find yourself setting boundaries is the last question that I have for you without, you are in a service industry and it's special and it's extraordinary and it's, you know, not a restaurant as far as service, (laughs) but, um, you know, it is a very, it's very easy to lose yourself and, um, I don't know if you're watching Call My Agent at all. Oh, I should watch that. Oh, it is the best. But, you know, the main that. character, you know, does everything for her clients, obviously. And she's incredible. And she's incredible at her job. And, and you know, it, it's at a cost. And how do you preserve yourself without anyone knowing, you know, <laughs> sort of keeping it on the down low? Do you have to be loud about it, maybe? I don't know. No, yeah. because you don't want it to be all about you and what you need. Right, but right. You need, like, you need your own kind of guardrails that, yeah. you know. For me, it's, I have a family, mm-hmm. and they're first. And if I have to, you know, something important, really important, and I need to be with them, I need to say no yeah. to that job. You know, I lost, I've lost one big client because I wouldn't budge with something to be available for something um, when my family needed me. So that's one thing. Um, I exercise. I like, no matter where I am in the world, no matter what time, you know, you, I mean, I have a 6 a.m. call time. It's a little hard to get down to the gym, but I am the girl who like is down at the gym at the hotel if we're on a tour or out going for a walk or, you know, I don't run, but like power walk, I exercise before because I it's like if I don't do that I don't feel good and if I don't feel good I'm not going to do my job right Um, I try to eat well but you know I can be a little gluttonous I love you know so there's that it's really about and you know it's about you know my spiritual practice is mine and it's something that I really value and I don't talk about it I don't you know I don't I mean if someone asks I will but but I don't um you know, it's something that's really personal and it's the thing that gives me that kind of inner core of strength that I know that I can be present in whatever situation. So um, that's something I always have with me, no matter what. I mean, I feel that in you. You are just like a tree to me. You feel, I, you feel so grounded to me. <laughs> like I would feel safe. <laughs> if I was in the room with you, I wouldn't worry about anything and I think that's because of all those things you just talked about you know my last name I, I learned this kind of recently Dubrov um I have Russian heritage and the 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 name is like a derivative of a tree oh no <laughs> I think it's like big oak tree or I, I yeah I'm a Russian that's tree. you I tree but it's like d- d- tree <laughs> and I'm like Taurus, I'm really, I guess I'm really, yeah, the earth is keeping my feet planted on the earth. I don't, you know, like Hollywood's fun, but it's not, it's not all I have and all I am. Mm. And it's even the fashion world. Like, it's just, it's fun to tap in, but then I want to tap back out and be barefoot in like, uh, you know, and hug a tree and like, you know, literally, you know, meditate next to that tree or that, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, Patty, I am so grateful for this time. I'm going to say it 95 more times. I'm so, so, uh, so honored that you took the time to talk to me today. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hey, heads up, we're going to take a little break for a minute. We have hit the ground running since the new year, and Kelly, Jace, and I are going to catch our breath for a second and do some work behind the scenes for the podcast. So make sure that you are following us on Instagram. Please look behind the look. I already have some interviews that are ready for you when we return, and you're not 
going to want to miss them. So make sure you're subscribed everywhere so you can stay updated instantly. And thanks for all your amazing reviews, especially recently. I know that you know how much that helps a project like this, and I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok, and produced and edited by Kelly Riley, with audio engineering by Nicole Tucker. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel Look Behind the Look podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.